In a previous video, I showed you all the basic blocking and attacking tools using parts of the hand. So in this video, I'll show you all the others. Most of the tools I'll be showing you are used in movements for advanced patterns, but this does not mean that they're not useful for beginners to learn. Some of these tools are very easy to form and they can be even more effective than the basic tools in a real self-defense situation. The under fist is formed by rolling the fingers tightly, just as with fore fist, but the thumb is pressed against the forefinger so it's kept out of the way. The second knuckles of the first three fingers form the attacking tool and it's used mainly for inward strikes and front strikes. The long fist is similar to the under fist in that it uses the second knuckles of the first three fingers to make contact with, but the main knuckles are extended forward to form a long fist shape. The thumb is bent sharply, but there's a space between the thumb and the forefinger, unlike the under fist. This tool is useful for attacking the Adam's apple, because of its narrow shape it can reach the target without getting obstructed by the chin. It's mainly used for punches to high section targets and because of its extra reach it has an advantage over the conventional fore fist. The open fist is formed by bending the wrist back to expose the base of the hand which is the contact area for this tool. The knuckles are bent forward slightly and the fingers are slightly curled forward as well. The tool is mainly used in the form of a punch to attack the nose, jaw or point of the chin. In rare cases it can also be used as a blocking tool in a similar way as the palm. The middle knuckle fist is formed like a fore fist except that the middle knuckle protrudes forward and is supported by the thumb. It's used to punch the solar plexus in an uppercut action or to punch the temple or philtrum in a straight line. And the tool has the advantage of concentrating the force in a small area which causes more damage to the vital spot. The four knuckle fist is formed in a similar way to the under fist except that the forefinger protrudes forward and it's supported by pressing the thumb against it to hold it in place. Like the middle knuckle fist the force will be concentrated in a small area and it's used in the form of a punch to attack the philtrum, temple and also the Adam's apple. Four knuckle fist punches are either performed in a straight line or in an arc motion. The thumb knuckle fist is my favourite tool. It's formed in the same way as the under fist, but the knuckle of the thumb is used as the attacking tool. It's used for thumb knuckle fist punch, which is a very versatile technique, because it can be done either inward or outward, and can hit the target from many different angles. The angle fingertip is formed by bending the main knuckles 90 degrees and the thumb is pressed against the second knuckle of the forefinger to stabilize the shape of the tool and keep it rigid. The contact area are the tips of the first three fingers. This tool is useful for thrusting to the eyes or solar plexus from a 90 degree angle. To form the forefinger tool, the forefinger is extended and bent slightly to keep it rigid. The thumb is pressed against the middle finger to keep the rest of the hand rigid, giving the forefinger more support. Like the double finger, it's useful for thrusting to the eyes, but it's also used in other soft targets such as the mastrid and the windpipe. The double finger is formed by extending the forefinger and the middle finger, and they're curled slightly. The middle finger is curled a little bit more than the forefinger so that the fingertips line up. The thumb is pressed against the third finger to keep the hand rigid. This tool is only used for attacking the eyes with a thrust. The arc hand is formed by curling the fingers and the thumb to form an arc from the four fingers to the thumb. This tool is useful for attacking the Adam's apple, but sometimes it's used as a blocking tool, although the contact area will be different when using it as a block. The back hand is formed with the hand open and the fingers are pressed together with the thumb pressed against the side of the hand towards the forefinger. It's used as an alternative to the back fist, especially when you don't want to inflict as much damage as the back fist is capable of. This makes it useful for warning strikes, where you want to demonstrate your potential power without seriously harming your opponent. It's also used as a blocking tool, especially with ground techniques. Finger pincers. To form this tool, the thumb and forefinger are extended out whilst the other three fingers are clenched tightly. The tip of the forefinger and thumb, as well as the second knuckle of the middle finger, form the contact area for this attacking tool, 
which is mainly used to attack the Adam's apple in the form of a crescent strike. The base of the knife hand is formed in a similar way to the knife hand except that the wrist is bent towards the thumb. It is used as an alternative to the knife hand and it is particularly useful when attacking to the clavicle. With the pressed finger, the fingertips and the thumb are pressed towards each other and this is to apply pressure to the arteries such as the neck arteries or to other small vital spots. The bare hand is formed by bending the fingers and thumb tightly inwards. The contact area is made up of the third knuckle of the fingers and the base of the palm. This tool is used mainly for inward strikes. The bow wrist is a powerful blocking tool which is formed by bending the wrist slightly downwards, but not too much. It's mainly used for upward blocks. The finger belly is part of the hand which is not used as a blocking or attacking tool, but is used to adjust the back fist or the forearm in various techniques used in Taekwondo patterns. The thumb ridge is formed in a similar way to the knife hand except that the wrist is bent upward to expose the ridge of the thumb. It's mainly used for upward block in a similar way to the reverse knife hand. The thumb is formed like a four fist except that the thumb is extended out. It is a useful tool but not to be confused with Police Verso which was a tool used in Roman times. And it has its uses in modern times. I suggest you use it for this video. In Taekwondo it's used for a thrusting technique and it's performed in an inward direction similar to an angle punch. The under forearm is the under part of the forearm, obviously, and it's mainly used for hooking block in cases where the opponent is too close to perform it with the palm. The back forearm is on the opposite side to the under forearm, and it's mainly used as a blocking tool as an alternative to the inner forearm or the outer forearm. Its main use is in parallel block where it's used with both arms to defend against two attacks, and also it's used in the shape of an alternate forearm to block against attacks in ground techniques. So these are all the hand parts. So with the three videos in this series, hand parts one and two, and the foot parts, you have nearly all the blocking and attacking tools that we use in Taekwondo. I say nearly because there are some miscellaneous parts which I haven't mentioned. And this includes the shoulders and parts of the head, including the forehead and the occiput. So now you have them all. So look out for my next Taekwondo tutorial series where I'll be talking about stances.